It's crime time. In you go, cat burglar. Come on then, kitty. Fetch me that gate pass. What are you waiting for? Stop watching that fish and open the safe. Ugh. I ain't throwing that in the fish tank. That ain't useful here. I don't want a price tag for an ugly column. Get to work, you fuzzy slacker. I could lob that at him, but I doubt it'd distract him. But in the end, it turned out to be cauliflower. Swiped. Teach him to read. Since this is octopus ink, I know it won't hurt the fishy. Now fetch me that gate pass. Go on. Hooray! You did it, you furry wee scoundrel. The gate pass is mine. Guess what, Jimmy? I have the gate pass. Really? Check it out. You got it? Yep. I can't believe the Baron gave it to you. Yes, gave. Ha! Well, take care of yourself and enjoy your visit to Saul Island. Thanks, Jimmy. See you later now. This place is creepy. It must be the leper colony. Someone doesn't want people exploring. I can't reach it. I can't reach it. Hello, is anyone there? Go away. Is this the leper colony? Leper colony, ha! Go away and leave us to our misery. There's nothing I can do to a lock that big. I think the padlock is a little beyond my fuzzy friend. I thought there was a leper colony on the island. That's because you've been taken in by old Whitebeard's propaganda. You mean this isn't a leper colony? No, it's a leper colony. What's that? A colony of leprechauns. Now be off with you. My name is Nelly. I'm a pirate captain here to foil the Baron's schemes. Really? How? Well, I'm not too sure what his schemes are exactly, but as soon as I know, foiling. Tell me about your colony. Sure, we've lived on Saul Island for about a hundred years. That's amazing. We moved here to fill our pots with the gold of Saul Mine. And we had a world of fun hiding it from tourists and doing little magics for them. So what happened? <sighs> The Baron caught wind of the gold. When we refused to mine for him, he walled us in and told everyone this was a leper colony. The fiend! Then the tourists stopped coming, and we didn't have any more visitors. That made us sad. 
You poor sweet things. Why don't you try to escape? Oh, metal's no barrier to a leprechaun. We are powerful magicians. The walls aren't the problem. Then what is? We're a sensitive people. Since the tourists left and these dreadful warning signs appeared. Yes? We've lost our spirit. We just sit around all day watching the shopping channel. How awful! And without high spirits, our magic doesn't work. We're the unluckiest leprechauns on Earth. Have you heard about the missing spoonbeaks? I was told they might be here on Saul Island. Hmm. Well, someone must work in Saul Mine these days. I'm pretty sure the Baron's wife ain't doing the digging. You mean Baron Whitebeard might have enslaved the trusting and delightful Spoonbeaks? I must get into the mine. Oh. What? The mine is guarded day and night by the Baron's dreaded zombie henchmen. Zombie henchmen? They call him El Mono. Watch out for him, he's creepy. Bye bye. I don't want any hot coals. They'd ruin my pockets. It's hot. I can barely touch it. It seems to be attached to the furnace. Hello? Creepy monkey. Hello? There's some kind of barrier. I can't get past. It must be something to do with that creepy monkey. I've seen El Mono, and he isn't nearly as dreadful as you made out. He was just floating on an old rug, waving a stick about. Though I did see a kind of magical barrier over the mine entrance. Ah, he must be working his enchantment in a trance. How can I stop El Mono's magic? Um... Do you know? No. Well, maybe. So, how can I end the enchantment? You can't, but perhaps we could. You mean leprechaun magic? Yes, but it can't work. Our spirit is crushed, our magic is gone. We're no help to you. How can you guys get back your spirit? We're a lost cause. You might as well go home. Stop talking soft. Tell me how I can raise the self-esteem of you little people. All right. Well, that death flag is really depressing. Maybe if we changed it to something nicer, it would buck up our spirits. Then we could use our magic to help you. I suppose so. You'll need a flag that'll really get people going. Something fierce and bold. Like a defiantly clenched green fist. I have a better idea. Wait a moment. I've drawn you a blueprint. Here. A big pink flag with a rainbow on it. Yes, and a four-leaf clover. Are you certain this is the kind of flag you guys need? Sure, it'll drag the whole colony out of the doldrums. Well, I'll try then. Are you sure about this flag design? Oh yes, it'll be marvellous. I can't afford to buy fancy flags. I don't have two dolders to rub together. Okay then, here. Two dolders. What's wrong with that? It's hardly a fistful of dolders. Well? Any chance of a few dolders more? Those coins are the last of our leprechaun gold. Oh, well, thank you. Bye bye. Someone has beaten me to it. Hello, I'm Nelly. I am Hortense Crockett, chairwoman of the Dignified Ladies Association of Meath. What's going on here? Today is a great day for the Dignified Ladies Association. We're going to circumnavigate the globe in 12 seconds. The current record is four years, so we're very hopeful of breaking it. From the look of that contraption, I'm sure you'll break something. I thought the DLA mostly did fates and bring and buy sales. That was before we had the support of the Baron and Baroness. They felt our resources might be better directed towards aeronautics and away from crochet. 
So here we are, ready to make history. So what's the hold-up? Be patient, dear. We're waiting for the pilot. Who? Angelo Lightfoot, a daredevil of whom we are all in awe. He's a dreamboat. Quiet, Myrtle. Well, are you sure he's coming? Of course. We have a deal, and Angelo will be paid handsomely. What's that contraption? That is the cutting edge of sky travel technology. It has been built solely by local housewives, I named it after myself, the Crockett Rocket. Have you considered an alternative name? Like what? Crockett's Folly? The Bone Mangler? Captain Stupid's Road to Death? I don't like your tone, young lady. So why is it fish-shaped? I took my inspiration from the natural world, the flying fish. Don't you reckon a bird shape would be better for a flying machine? We tried that first, but scales were easier to make than feathers. So what's the bed on stilts for? Ah, that is the very clever part. That is where the pilot shall land after he circles the Earth. At the last moment of the journey, the rocket will open its jaw and spit Angelo to the safety of this carefully positioned bed. It's my bed. Hush, Myrtle. What will happen to the rocket itself? It will explode. Ah. Laters. Hello, dear. Quiet, please, Myrtle. I am the spokeswoman, young lady. You may address all questions to me. Ni way am I getting in that. Look at it. It's a death trap. I could go for a wee nap right now. No, Spoonbeaks come first. I could try toppling it onto the people below. Nah, there's no one down there. Many thanks for your kind donation. No problem. Enjoy the wonders of the Rogues Gallery. It's for a tiny-headed person. It wouldn't fit me. A ship at sea. Boring. A duel. Have at you, sir. And so forth. A painting of some famous island. Note the artist's use of bold, heavy strokes. As if he's saying, I painted this with a twig crudely lashed to me hook. I think the barman would notice if I tried to sneak one of the paintings out of here. Anyway, there are handy free postie cards. It's another picture of a ship. Apparently, they're really interesting to pirates. Two vintage bottles of Mama Fish Cakes non-specific. The treasure chest. That's what it's all about in the piracy game. That one's not really a painting, it's just drawn on the wall. Here be the bones of Pirate Admiral Fernandez del Toro. Appearing as he did immediately before delivering his famous We're All Going to Die speech. Shaking Skellington's is only fun if it's dinosaurs. I'll be taking this. Shaking Skellington's is only fun if it's...